Right, so today we're going to have a look at the carbs on the G. I had made the classic mistake of letting it sit for too long without running it. So the carbs got gummed up and we're going to have a go at clearing it. Got one screw. It's a giant Phillips, I don't know what size it is. And you've got to be careful getting these little plastic grommets. Got to pull right at those locations, otherwise they snap off like that one did years ago. Next step is the fuel cock. One two millimeter bolt there. Another one up under here. Put that off. I'm going to loosen the fuel tank. So when you've got them loosened off, you pull those out. You lift this just a little bit, not too far. That's what this 2x4 is doing. These come out. Right, so the next stage is disconnecting the fuel hose that goes from the fuel cock to the fuel pump. Or a pair of pliers. The steps are looking messy. Okay, round on the other side now, and there's these two connections, bullet connections, that go, I've had to replace the pliers, that go to the fuel gauge. Right, there are a couple of vents on this side, they'll just pull right out with it. Just grab that and pull back, see vents coming out. Stick it over there. Right, because we are going to be removing the carbs, I need to disconnect a few things. One of them is the fuel line from the pump to the carbs. Again, I've got a clamp on here because I've got non-standard fuel hose on it. This is automotive fuel hose. All right, so on the air box, you've got the oil vent tube. That's got to come off. That should come off fairly easy. Like that. And then there's two little vents right next to it. Those just pull off. Those are the carb float bowl vents. So the other thing I like to do, which gives me more room, is I'll loosen the air box so that I can pull it off the carburetor. So there's two bolts here that come out. And then on the carbs themselves, there's four screw clamps on the front. Do you want to just open these up? There's four on the air box. Open those puppies up. And once you've got the two bolts out of the air box, I use a bungee cord. So I'm going to pull the air box off the carbs and hold this in this backward position as far as it will go. Alright, so with the air box back, I've now got a fair bit of room. I can sort of lever these off. Start to move them right. I'm going to sneak the throttle cables out. It's a little tight on the spark plug there. Right, so I'm undoing the top two nuts. So I'm removing this front one first. You sort of loosen the top nut all the way out, push it back and down and through the hole, and you've got to wiggle on the cable a bit, like this, lift the cable up, and there's a lead bead on the end. Yeah, I forgot to remove the choke cable, so I was just playing with that one too. So you've got two throttle cables, choke cable to get off. Right, now we should be able to just remove the carbs. So make sure I keep it high. Make sure the fuel line comes with it. Take them off, stick them on the workbench. Yeah, I'm just draining off the any remnants of fuel. And I have gone ahead and replaced these screws that they came with with hex screws. 
because they're much easier to work with. Okay, spot the two new floats I've had to put in over time. Yeah, the white ones. They turn this brownish color after multiple years of exposure to our nasty fuel. That's the main jet. If you unscrew that one, down inside is the needle jet. The front part of this, this is where the fuel goes for the choke. When you pull the choke on, it sucks it up through here. And then buried inside, down this one, that's where the idle jet is, and those are the ones that plug up. Okay, I've got some tools here. Don't look like much, but that's a match handle with a thick wire in it from wire brush. This one has a thinner wire brush wire stuck in it. I actually had to cut the match handle in half and glue it back together to trap it. Now if you want to take the needle jet out, you want a nice flat bladed screwdriver that fits well into the slot. Don't use the one that's too small. Okay, so handy tip when you're making this little tool to clear this jet, you want to make sure that the wire is actually sticking out far enough to go all the way through the little, tiny little hole in the jet on the end. Here's a good view of that tiny little hole in the end of the jet. And that sucker is just tiny and this wire barely fits through it. So with the other ones, all you've got to do is move the float holder slightly to the side and gently insert that thing all the way down and through. Right, get the carbs back in, it's just as fiddly as you would expect it to be. Alright, so I've got the throttle cables attached. Took a few minutes. Um, it is tricky, and not real good, you just have to figure it out. Okay, so I can now shove them back across the rest of the way to get the choke cable back in. So you place the nipple over the hole, sort of twist it into the hole. It'll go, there we go, it's halfway in. I want to hold that and sort of push the cable till it goes under and then out like that. It's because the slot's on the bottom where the cable goes. And this bit, you just pull it and let it go back. So now the choke cable. Right, so now we've got all four lined up. All we got to do is push them back in. That's a lot easier said than done. And I probably should have put some grease on there first. I'm going to go do that. On the front side, it seems to be much better if the clamps are actually at the top. And on the back, on the airbox side, uh, they're better at the bottom. Keep the back end raised. Gauge the front end. I'm going to put it sideways. Right, so when I'm routing these, bent lines here and stick them down through these cables and out in front of the swing arm pivot. There's a fuel pump on. With the tank, it's ready for the side panels. I think I'll give it a test at this stage, see if it works. Right, so if you remember I have the priming button. So I turn it on, I got one click out of the fuel pump. Now I'm getting multiple clicks out of it and it's filling the carbs. So I just have to wait for the clicking to stop. There we go. Should be ready to fire up. A little bit of choke. That is running a lot better than before. Just with the choke off, a little bit of misfire because it's stone cold. 